Hello and welcome back to part three of uh, my in-depth look for beginners at Shortcuts A Lot. Uh, this one is basically going a bit more in-depth into the things that I showed you in the overview. So I'm going to start this one uh, on this video with the menus right at the top of the screen. So first of all, you've got your file menu. This is where you would expect to find things like new project, open project and saving. Uh, options. They're all there right at the top of that menu. Straightforward, as you would in any other program, you can start new projects, open an existing project that you've been working on, or save something in a particular way with a particular name. The next <coughs> batch of um, menu options are import, export, trace, place, scan, FCM, convert, and send to. Now, import obviously is to get something into the software. The file types that we can import are quite varied and they range from SVGs, which we know are a common uh, file format for cutting files, projects from previous versions of Shortcuts A Lot. The current version is version 4, but obviously it goes back through uh, versions 3, 2, and 1. Uh, Shortcuts A Lot designs, uh, which is obviously the project files that we're working on, PDFs, PNGs. Adobe Illustrator files, EPS, FCM, which are for Brother Scan and Cut, GSD files, which are the old files for GraphTech Craft Robo uh, electronic cutting machines, and the WPC. A number of these are uh, almost compatible as cutting files, and some of them are images, so we would need to potentially trace those. Uh, so that's that option. Exporting us obviously to get this out of our um, software and into our cutting machines. So the, straight, the standard one would be SVG. This is the most commonly used file format for electronic cutting machines out there on the market. Bitmap is to save as an image as is JPEG and PNG and TIFF. So if we want to save an image as a preview, if we're gonna share our files for any reason, we can do that. And FCM is to export it for use with the Brother Scan and Cut. Uh, it's one of the only third party software packages out on the market that actually allows you to do that. Uh, going further down that line, trace image is obviously where we're bringing uh, an image into the shortcuts a lot package, and then using the inbuilt tracing functionality to create a cutting line from that image. I'll go further into that much further down the line. I just wanted to obviously show you what that um, dialog window looks like. Uh, the next option down is place image. Now we can obviously bring in various things here from uh, any of our folders or files on our, our on our computer, and we can bring them into shortcuts a lot. And it's basically image file formats here. So we've got bitmap, GIF, JPEG, and PNG. Scanned cut is where we are using the shortcuts a lot method of scanning an image and then creating a cutting line with registration points. Now this won't work on all machines, but if it's possible to do it with yours, then this is an option for you. FCM Batch Convert gives us the option to take in a whole bunch of S SVG files, maybe we've got thousands on our computer, and convert them all to use with, as FCM files. Now, with recent updates to Brother Scan and Cut, because uh, the machines now take SVG files as standard, that's not always um, a, a necessary need, but we've got the option to do it if we want to. Say, for example, we just want to shove them on a USB stick and, and keep them available. That's fine, we could do that. Uh, and then send to is to send this to back to previous versions of shortcuts a lot. So if you've got shortcuts a lot two, which gave you the ability to cut directly with the Cricut machines, you can send it to that version of the software. That version though isn't uh, available anymore. So potentially you would just cut via the SVG file format with your Cricut machines. Okay, the next batch, we've got the eShape store, the share project and the sync my library. E-Shape Store brings up a store in which we can buy uh, various different shapes so uh, and fonts and things like that. So we've got all sorts of different things we can go there and purchase for 99 cents or, or you know, 199 sort of low rates for all sorts of different types of file formats. 
obviously these are specifically designed for the uh, shortcuts a lot uh, and Sizzix eCal machines but I believe we can actually bring them in and use them with our uh, different machines now then next one down is share project so there is the ability to actually share your projects with other people if you're signed in this is to share it within the shortcuts a lot community sync my library again you would need to be signed into your shortcuts a lot account in order to uh, sync your library you can create a free account here if you don't already have one next options are print setup and print Obviously, print setup is to set up your particular printer for printing. Say, for example, we're exporting a picture and we want to print it. We've got that option here, so we can set up the printer to do that. Recent projects just brings up a list of recent things you've worked on. I haven't worked on any in a while, so it hasn't got any for me. And then obviously exit is the last point that we would come to in our design phase. Now, the next menu along is our edit, and this is again where we'd expect to find lots of standard functions. We've got undo, redo, which I'm sure I felt self explanatory. Cut, copy, and paste, again, standard across many design uh, software packages. Paste in place. If you uh, copy something and then use paste in place, it will place it exactly where you copied it from, so it will be right over the top of it. Great if you're doing layered designs. Paste autofill obviously takes it and then fills the area or fills the mat. Select all or deselect all. Again, this is for selecting or deselecting the shapes that you've got on your mat. And then in the edit menu, we've also got our preferences settings. So we can choose from various options about using different uh, aspects or changing angles that we're working at, nudging things in specific increments. Again, something to play with, but these are all fairly self-explanatory and standard as you, uh, sorry, when you in install the software. Uh, object menu is for working with specific objects on our virtual mat. Transform is to do things like moving it, rotating it, or resizing it. We can also flip and auto fit from this menu. Arrange is to bring things to the front or send them back. Again, if you're working with layered designs, it's a valuable design tool. Alignment gives you many different alignment options. Distribute also helps us because we've got lots of different options for distributing a grouped selection of designs uh, across our page. Group and ungroup is obviously working for multiple uh, objects. Break apart is if we've got a design that's made up of lots of different cut lines, we can break them all apart and then choose the ones that we actually want to keep. And merge is obviously the reverse of that. Duplicate and duplicate rotated. Duplicate will just create copies of this, the image as it is. Duplicate rotated will take an image and it will then rotate it on each copy. Hide and show all will uh, hide or show anything that you've got selected. Lock and unlock again will lock or unlock anything you've got selected. Remove effects obviously takes the effects that are from a menu further down and removes those effects. Again, remember all of these I'll be going through in depth in the near future. So this is again just a, a more a detailed look at what's available to us in the software, but without going too far in. Path obviously takes the outline of a shape and gives us various options to do things with that. We can combine it together to create a union. We can intersect those shapes, uh, create excluded versions, and we can punch through uh, either from the front shape to the back or the back shape to the front. We can simplify a design. So if there are lots and lots of nodes in our design, we can actually say, listen, I want to simplify that down and remo remove any unnecessary nodes. That's one thing for us. We can split the paths, reverse them. We can convert an object to a path. Close a path, so if you've got a cut line, you can sort of connect the last two points and close that off. We can join paths together, or we can create an offset. That obviously gives us just an outline. The layer menu gives us various options for working with layers. This is a slightly more advanced feature, but it gives us the chance of working uh, designs on top of each other so that we can create a layered design. You can obviously duplicate the layers, delete layers, and add layers. You can arrange them, show or hide them, and lock them, as we did with the objects. 
layer properties again will just give us options to um, either rename it or, or give it a different color for identification purposes. Page is about adding a page and this is what we call a page. So I can add one in here and I can call it page two, give it a color and there I've got page two. So if I'm working on a set of designs, say for example for a wedding, I might have one page for the invitation text, I might have one page for the placeholders, one page for the order of service, and then I can obviously copy objects uh, from page to page, but save it all as a shortcuts a lot design folder or a design project, and then recall it all together later on without having to open multiple files. Effects gives us lots of fantastic cool tools to work with. We can give our design a, a faux 3D rotation. We can give it a barrel or a bulge. We can create it looking as if it's um, a three-dimensional canned object. We can punch things out. We can create lattices from shapes, line fills, objects on paths. So for example, if I had a heart shape, I could create um, a load of circles to go around that heart shape. So it's basically putting the circle on the path of the heart. I can pierce through, so dotted um, piercings, puzzle generators, rhinestone layouts, shadow layers, title crawls, that basically takes your things and your text and makes it look like it's off Star Wars opening credits. Give them a wave or make them a wrapper. Mm, plenty to play with, and as I say, I'll go through these more in depth in the future. Working with text, we can choose from all of the fonts that are on our computer and set a specific size. We can convert that text to outlines, which will remove the um, ability to edit the word, so to correct spelling mistakes, and just create an outline from that text. We can load font files or get a font preview here as well. There's other ways of doing this, and I'll show you those again soon. Our view menu gives us ways to actually interact with our virtual mat, and we can either choose the actual size, fit to window, zoom in or out, and you can see the shortcut keys for these as well here. We can snap to the grid, to objects, or to sublayers. Whichever you choose, it's totally um, versatile and adaptable to how you work. We can, we can turn off the grid on the mat. We can show circles in case we're working in a circular fashion. Uh, we can show the grid and the circles. And we can also change the ruler unit. So currently I've got inches, but I can go in centimeters or millimeters. Cutter is actually for controlling your cutting machine from within the software here to some degree. First of all, though, you would set the mat size. So we've got all of the common mat sizes available for the cutting machines out there. We can work in landscape or portrait. We can get a bit of a preview going on here as well. Cut with is where you would select your um, cutter from the menu list. And you can see here that the system is compatible with a massive array of different cutting brands out there. And obviously then there'll be the models in between. Now I don't have mine connected because I generally take the files to the machine instead, but you've got the option. Got cutter settings and then my cutter, and again, you'll get through to manage cutters. Tablet connection is because there is a tablet version uh, of the software available to buy, uh, and you can connect your software on your computer to the tablet as well, so you can transfer files from one to the other. Again, more about that in the future. Window, we can actually bring back the library that I closed down earlier, and you can see there are a mass of lots of different shapes that we can start playing around with editing and, and working with together. These are all included as standard and obviously we've got our designs in there as well. Design downloads if we've purchased any or recent downloads. So again, many, many to work with. Uh, and project info is where we can type in things about our current project. So give it a title, tell everybody who made it, the email, the website address if you've got one, notes, colors for pages, we can see there we've got the colors available, fonts that were used, rhinestones that were used, so we can see how many were needed, the size and things like that. Uh, so it's really just a way of getting details of your project uh, into or out of the system. And when you save it, obviously this information will be saved with it. Now the workspace 
basic and advanced, there's very little between the two, but you can also change the workspaces if you want to. And the help menu at the end, obviously, as you would expect, gives you lots of information about the software, quick access to the help files, online forums, video tutorials, um, drivers, support, or whether it's technical or system information, registering your product, checking for updates, and setting the default language. So that's really just a closer look at the menus available in Shortcuts A Lot. Do join me in the next uh, overview that I've got for you, which will be about the tools that are available to us. For more hints, tips and tutorials, please subscribe to my YouTube channel or visit me on any of these social networking sites.